today's activity was crime scene investigation, and students get to experience to become crime investigators themselves. And the purpose of this activity is to engage the students to combine their scientific knowledge that they get in their classroom, as well as their problem-solving skills, something that they can do already and apply it to uh, a real-world problem. So today's case was a uh, scene of the store being robbed. Taylor's store was robbed yesterday and students have to investigate to figure out who actually committed the crime. There were multiple marks left by the suspect. So after the register was robbed, we found that the glass near the register had a fingerprint, which samples were also taken from that. And piece of fabric was stuck to the table nail and that piece of uh, cloth was also taken to be investigated by the students and compared to the samples provided. There was some white powder on the counter that was spread, that was also picked up and investigated, as well as some dust on the floor. And that was the five main investigations that student had to do. So station A was the actual crime scene where students would come up to and take their notes on. Station B was solubility and reactivity testing. At that station, students got to compare the known powders of samples that were provided to them to the powder that was found on the crime scene and identify that powder to one of the ones that were known. And that activity involves their ability to distinguish between physical properties versus chemical properties. So a physical appearance versus solubility, which is a chemical property and the physical appearance being the physical property. The unknown sample that was found at the crime scene, the powder on the counter was found to be the cornstarch after comparison to the known samples provided. Station C was the flames test station. So in that, at that station, students got to uh, investigate into the powder that was found on the floor, the dust that was found on the floor, and compared to some known samples. So by dipping the glass rod into the solid sample and setting it on fire, they were able to distinguish the different colors of the known samples. And then by picking up some powder that was found on the floor, at the crime scene, they were able to also figure out what the color was and compare it to the known powders. Students found out that the dust found on the ground was sodium chloride after comparison to the known samples of sodium chloride and lithium chloride. Station D was the microscope investigation station, which allowed students to actually work with the microscope and look at the samples themselves. Three different samples from three suspects were picked up of their fabric of their jacket and compared to the fabric that was found at the crime scene. That activity involves students distinguishing between the different patterns of the fabrics and comparing them to the unknown sample found at the scene. The suspect that actually left the sample of the jacket's fabric on the scene was found to be the cotton sample after comparison to the known samples at the scene. Station E was the fingerprint investigation station. Uh, we used fluorescent powder that would glow upon exposure to ultraviolet light in order to be able to see the patterns better of the fingerprints. There were three fingerprint samples from three different suspects that were compared to the fingerprint found on the glass at the crime scene. And students were able to distinguish who was the actual person that committed the crime, and they found out that that suspect two was the one that actually committed the crime according to the fingerprint.